Okay, in our last video, we worked on adding modifiers through our modify list in order to change and edit some of our shapes. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to actually work with the different tools in the modeling ribbon here. And we won't have this ribbon pop up until we're actually into the mode in order to change and edit our, our shapes using editable poly. So we're going to get started. Um, I think you can model and use whatever you would like with the tools in here. Um, and your shape can look however you want. But I just want to give a rundown of some of the tools that we're going to use in order to, to use some of these polygon modeling um, things that are listed in here. So I'm just going to start off with a box. I think I'm going to uh, try to build a bench here um, using some of the, the tools that are in here. I'm just going to draw a 3x3 three three box um, and start from there. So... You know, I don't have to have the size because I can always set it here. So there is my three by three cube. Okay. So last time we would go into modify and we, we would change this and start adding layers of changes onto the shape. But what if I actually want to to change this, the, the actual shape of it and just uh, freehand move things around? Okay. We're going to do that using our editable polygon tools. There's three places we can find it. First place is, if you turn this ribbon on, you might not have it, you might. But uh, we want to make sure the ribbon is turned on. Are you still sewing those? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, I'm back. Thank you. Um, so what if I want to change the actual shape of this uh, and edit it? There's a couple ways we can do that. We're going to turn this into an editable polygon. There's three places we can do that. One is in the ribbon. You can check and see if this ribbon is turned on by right-clicking on any one of these toolbar um, move dock uh, bars, grab handles here, and you want to turn on ribbon. If it's not on, just turn on ribbon. So that will give you a small menu here, and under the modeling menu, you'll see polygon modeling, and you can convert this shape to poly. What that means in general, it shows us here, it bakes the modifiers and converts the object to an edible poly format for editing sub objects, which are going to be um, our five different things we're going to discuss here in the row here. Our vertices, our edges, our borders, polygons, and elements. So we are able to change these five things. What does it mean to bake them? It's like when you bake a cake, you put everything together um, and you get a cake at the end. You can't separate the eggs and the flour and the salt after it's been baked. So if I had my, my um, list of modifiers here, once I change it to an edible poly, then it's locked into that shape, okay? But I can change it using these, these different tools here. I can also do it by getting my quad menu, right clicking on my object. Right now, I'm getting two of the four menus because that's all it's um, allowing me to do with what I have for in my scene. But at the bottom here, we have convert to editable poly. Okay, I can click there. One other place to do it is actually in the modifier list here. I can right click on box and it's going to let me change that to an editable poly. So any one of those three locations, um, I usually... You know, everyone does it different. Once it's an edible poly, now you see this quad menu. It gives me actually four different parts. This box represents the top, the bottom, this one, and that one. Um, but once you, one, I usually use this one here just because uh, it's I remember it the most. So here's some of the things that we're going to be using specifically in this video. They're not showing up uh, because I haven't selected what face I want to to modify. Um, if I want to edit my vertexes, vertexes are the points on the corners where different edges come together. So if I click on vertex, you're going to see it's giving me these points. Now, if I go to my move tool and turn on my move tool, I can grab any one of these corners, any one of these points, and I can move them. And it's going to change it in my scene. Okay. And I can warp the, the way my part looks using these move tools. Okay. So that's one thing that we can do with our edible poly guys. We, we see that we can change the shape um, and size of it by just grabbing it and stretching it. Now, the other choices we have for selection are edge. Um, 
I'm going to grab this edge here and or I can grab this one and uh, we can start selecting some edges here. Let's um, let's try this when I have an edge. Um, let's actually we're going to check out a couple other things here real quick and then I'm going to go back to edge to show something. So if I grab a border and I click on on border. What the what does the border do? It's going to allow me to to kind of do the loop around here. But right now I don't really have a border in my shape because everything is is closed off. So let's try two things. First of all, I'm going to go to polygon. Polygon is like the shape, the face of any one of my um, objects in my scene. So here's the polygon. This is the face, uh, the top face of my cube. So with that, okay, I can do a few things. I can, if I'm in my move tool, I can grab this face and I can pull this face up. And what's it going to do? It's going to modify my shape by stretching this out, just kind of like grabbing Play-Doh and stretching the face out or it's compacting it down. Okay. That's different than if I use my clone tool before. Uh, you remember how we did that with the clone tool? I hold shift down and that's cloning the face. Okay. That's not what we're doing when we, when we use the move tool in the face. But now while the face is selected, I can hit delete on my keyboard and the face disappears. Okay. So now I have an opening in, in my, my element, which is the final one here. So element, if I click on that, it's going to give me the, the entire uh, object in my scene. But um, let's go back to now to this one here, border. If I click on border, now I can click on border because I have an opening. So this border, it's giving me the around the, the edge and um, I can I can make make some modifications now now let's say I wanted to close this off okay and um, let me get out of this tool actually all right let's say my computer kind of, I wanted to close this and put this back together. Okay. I'm going to grab two edges here. I'm going to grab this edge, but I need to grab this edge as well. So if I hold control down on my keyboard, I hit control. Now I have those two edges selected. What I can do is I can bridge that space and I hit bridge and it closes this off. It's like it builds a bridge between these two edges. Now I won't do that with, with my border tool. And the reason being is it doesn't know specifically, am I going from here to here or here to here? It, it gets a little bit confused. So I want two edges across from each other and it will close those off and I can have my, my shape again. So let's say you could do that in your garbage can. We, we changed that and we opened up the top of our garbage can, if you remember how we did that. Um, so those are a couple of the tools with the selection and just real quick what we can do with them. So let's say, let's start working on our design a little bit. Um, I'm going to take this shape here and I want to, let's say I want, now it's an edible polygon. I don't want it to look like a box anymore. Okay. I can go into my scale tool as long as I have the face selected. So I clicked on polygon, I clicked on the top and I can grab my scale and uniform tool. It's the top one out of these four. And if I scale this, okay. Um, I'm in move. Let me grab it. If I scale this, grabbing it here, see what happens? Um, everything starts to, to get wider. So I can scale the top wide. I can scale it down to narrow. Okay. Just by using the scale because I'm scaling the one face on here, but everything else in my shape is connected to that on these four other faces around here. Um, anything that's connected to the edges or the vertices, vertices are going to be affected by, by this tool for, for my scale and shape tool. Okay. With here, I just grabbed just these two planes. I didn't really want to do that, but, um, I'm going to leave this wide. Okay. And that's with my scale tool for the surface. Now, what if I want to, to add another, uh, part on the top here? It looks just like that, but it scales down narrow. 
Okay, I could do it two ways. I'm going to show you the long way, and then I'm going to show you the quick way to do it. So if I use my extrude tool here and I go to move, I'm going to extrude the face out of here. Um, I lost my extrude tool. I'm going to grab this face and I can pull this up. I'm going to go about another three inches. Okay. And then now I can go back to scale and I can scale that back down. Okay. It makes sense. That's how we did the first one. But let's say I wanted to accelerate and speed up that process. Um, this bevel tool will basically do the same thing, except it does it all in one step. So I'm going to bring it up. As soon as I click off of the mouse and let go, it's going to give me the option of how big do I want my bevel to be? Do I want it to bevel out or bevel in? So without clicking on any other tool, it's giving me those choices. So I can click that. So that's going to speed things up using the bevel tool. Um, we're going to use this later on in our next um, binge act activity to, to do some more settings. And we're going to use these bevel settings where you can adjust and add some, some extra settings and type them in so that everything looks exactly how you want. So I'm going to use this as, as kind of the foot from my bench. Um, now I want to draw this leg coming out here. So I'm going to want this shape coming out the top. So I'm just going to go back to extrude. And I have the face selected here. And I'm going to draw kind of a leg for one leg out of four for my bench. Okay. Um, then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one side of the bench and then I'm going to clone it and draw the other side of the bench. But I don't want to remodel these bottom feet again. I want them to all look exactly the same. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to extrude this one little panel here about three inches. Um, I can use my i can look down on my reference bar on the bottom uh, i started at like 67 so i can go i'm just gonna make it look kind of like a box a cube again okay that's gonna give me a surface to work with here so let's clone this do you remember how we cloned from our past exercises um i'm gonna go to select and i want to select everything in my scene and i'm going to go move I'm going to hold shift down and I'm going to clone this, this direction about like that. Now, if you notice our clone menu looks different than it did before. It's saying, do we want to clone to an object and call this a new object right now? It's called box zero two. If we look over here, um, or do we want to keep it the same? And do we want to keep it as part of box zero two? and clone it to this element. Element is the whole object in the scene right now. The whole foot was, and I'm going to clone it to element. So that means this is going to be tied and related to this one. OK, so now I have two. Um, let's expand this now. And I'm going to put like a backrest on here. So let's grab the top one more time using my Polygon tool, I'm going to select the face, poly, grab the face, and then I'm going to use the extrude button one more time and drag that up. All right, and think of that as the backrest. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to connect the front piece to this piece and have a runner for the bench slats to go across. So how do I do that? Okay. I'm going to use this tool called the bridge tool to do that. But what the bridge tool does is it's going to connect two pairs of polygons, two faces. Um, and we already showed how to do that with two edges to close off a box. But now I want to I want to connect this face with the face over here. So in order to do that, I'm going to select one face. I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard and depress my my center scroll wheel, rotate my scene a little bit so I can collect click on this face. But before I do that, I'm going to hold control down. So I multi select. Okay, so I'm holding control. Now I was able to select both of those. If I don't do that, I select one. And then I go to select the other. And it deselects the first one. So select one, hit control, select the other and hit bridge. Okay, what that should do is that connects those two faces and adds a new part of our element by connecting every edge and building a, a piece to go across there. So now we bridge that. Um, 
this looks like a bench bag. I don't like this particularly in my scene because uh, it looks like it'd be very uncomfortable. Can we add modifiers to our editable polygon? Absolutely. So let's do that real quick. That should be something we've already done. I have editable poly here. I'm going to add a bend modifier like we did in the trash can, uh, just because we want to make sure we don't lose those skills of what we already did. So I'm going to bend this. Um, I don't want it to go that way. I just want it to go a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of a bend. Let's make it like a 10 degree bend. And you can eyeball it. And then I want it to go. Yeah, that's okay. And the whole bench kind of bends back and you can think of it as a little bit more comfortable. Is it perfect? No, but um, gets the job done. Now, let's just go like this and maybe we are going to extend one more little top of our panel here. Um, so we're going to go back into editable poly. This is where we're editing everything, right? So. I have my bend modifier and I lose all my editable poly tools. If I click back on editable poly, they're all back. I can still continue to edit this. No big deal. So I'm going to grab the face here. I'm going to extrude this up a little bit so I can make a little fancy part at the top of my bench. Um, so grab my extrude tool and let's make that like this. Okay. So now let's clone this over to, I'll have this as my left side. I'll do the right side of the bench as a clone, connect these, and we will go from there. Um, how do we do that? Let's, before I do that, let's try a couple other tools here real quick. Um, I want to, I want to, hold on one sec. I have the door open. I'm going to pause this here. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so I can visualize this, um, as being right and left. But if I wanted to have some individual slats running across here and be able to, I can use my bridge tool, right? If I clone this and have it go from right to left. Um, so, but if I do it right now, it's going to clone this whole chunk. And I don't really want that. I want it to look like maybe some boards going across here. So how can I, I edit that? Once I have these in here, I have this solid piece. What I need to do is I need to put some, some breaks in here so that I can have different faces that I can bridge. So how can I do that? I'm going to use this Swift loop tool here. And this is a smart tool. If you notice, I can hold this anywhere in here and it's going to, it's going to paint a loop and basically cut a segment of this out and, um, and add, allow me to have extra faces added in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave some gaps and that's going to be like my space. And then this is kind of my, like my piece of lumber. And then here's a gap from my next one. Okay, going across, here's a gap for my next one, and a little space between that and the back. And then I'm going to do the same for the for the back here. I'm going to have a little space here, um, maybe a big panel running across, and a little space here. You can do this, however. Um, this is just to demonstrate the Swift loop tool is something very handy. We also have uh, um, Paint Connect, which is, is pretty handy as well. And... Uh, what that does is it's going to uh, connect all of your, your different connectors in there. But let's clone this now and see what we can do um, with our, you know what, one last thing that I think I want to do on this bench, um, just to make it look kind of cool, I want to, let's say I want to round this top off. So I'm going to grab my, I want to get off, I have to actually deselect Swift Loop Tool um, so it stops. I'm going to bring this up with, um, remember how to do that? We're going to use the extrude tool. Let's bevel this real quick. I'm going to bring it up and bring it in a little bit. But now what I want to do is, and that's fine. Um, I want to show you this. Let me grab the edge here. So if I grab my edge, we get some different tools here. This changes from uh, bevel to chamfer. And this is what I wanted to show you what we can do with chamfer. So if I go to chamfer settings, what this lets us do is we can say, how many chamfers do we want? And we can round this off and say, we're gonna have this go like this. And 
So we put six chamfers in there and I can click OK. And then I can do this side and I can chamfer this other side and it rounds it off to the same settings. And so that's a real handy tool. Um, it got a little bit whacked out because the other one went kind of far. But um, let me just undo it real quick. And I think I just have to change my settings. So I'm going to go chamfer. That's, um, we want to grab an edge. So I want to grab this edge. And instead of having one inch, let's change that to, uh, I don't know, about a half of an inch. And then we can round that off. And then we'll do that one as well. Hit the check mark to select. And I can chamfer this side. Same deal. And there we go. Now it should be, I have actually have to click the check. Um, it took me a while to get the hang of that. And now it should be uniform. All right. So that's the chamfer tool. Um, weld tool. Weld tool is really cool. I'm not going to show you on my project how that works, but um, let me show you. This is really neat. This, um, this girl here is Aneta V. And we're going to look at this later on in the semester too. She has these, uh, how to make basically a superhero. And I'm just going to show you a second of it. Um, she's going to bring this arm that she modeled over here and connect it to the body using all polygon editing tools. And she goes really fast here. Um, but you can see she's going to pull the different faces out. She's in mirror zone right now. So everything she does on one side is, is uh, doing it to the other side. So she only has to do this once. And then she's going to use some weld tools to, to move and connect the arm to the shoulder and stuff. But you see right now she's clicking on the different vertices and she can move and adjust those um, to make them fit her, her sketch behind there. So these are all super useful tools that you can use for advanced modeling. We're just delving into the real basics to, to touch on it. But with a little bit of practice um, and some other tutorials, you'll be able to, to do some fantastic things. So I did want to just show you that real quick, um, that these tools are, are very useful no matter what we're doing. So let's go back here. I'm going to clone this now so that we can finish out our bench and finish this unit. Um, so I'm going to go select. I'm just going to select this whole thing. And I'm going to hit Shift and clone, if this works. Uh, make sure I'm in the right. Let me clone the whole element here. All right, so that's why it doesn't like my selection. I needed to select the whole thing. Now I can hit Shift. Now let's try it. Uh, there we go. And let's say you can make your bench, whatever. Um, and I'm going to clone the element again. That way it's all one unit, one element. So last thing that I want to do is add these, these bench things in, and I want to uh, illustrate inset real quick. Um, so we can we can do the it's not going to give us the tools unless we click on the faces that we want to connect so i want to connect that over here um okay so i wanted to try p connect but um we're going to use bridge i select that first one i wonder if it will let us do it this way and then select the second one no nope. so we got to multi-select first and it gets a little awkward because so I have to hold control down and then select one. Okay, they're both selected and then hit bridge. All right, and that will close my gap. And wonder, this gives us some bridge settings about how it's going to, to, um, to do that. Okay, uh, we don't really have to, to mess with, with any of these settings. I think they're all pretty much stock because, um, I'm going to just change those back because ours is just a straight bridge. Now, if you had a weird shape, you might, we might need to go in and, and adjust those. So let me see. If I zoom in, I can see both sides. So that's going to be helpful. So I'm just going to click on all the faces that I want to connect. So one, hold control, do this one, bridge those. Um, bridge, perfect. I'll do this one, hold control, bridge. Okay. And then, so you can go through, do this real quick, and you should be able to um, 
kind of do this pretty quick. Now, if I don't, now, because I'm not hitting the check because I hit, let me get out of this panel here, because I had that panel open. It wasn't actually uh, selecting any of my, my bridges. Um, okay, bridge. Now I can do, that was weird. Okay, so let's try the next one. One, two, bridge, bridge, and one, two, bridge, bridge. I guess I'll click off of it to kind of seal the deal here and do it a couple more times. If I click three times, it kind of closes it out. And one, two, three. All right, so how did that turn out? There, we have our slats. They're not uniform. Um, you could tweak that and move those around. Um, but so one last thing that I wanna show you here is the bevel, and this is uh, the inset, I'm sorry. So let me do the inset here and we're going to add, I'm going to do the face. What does inset do? It allows us to bring some shapes in. Okay. And it's going to draw this shape exactly the same shape as the original uh, polygon, except it's going to make it smaller. So I can do that here and I can do that up here to make our face look a little bit fancy. And then I could, um, I could go to my move and we can inset those a little bit if we want and just kind of go like that. Or I could extrude those and bring that face in or out if I wanted to a little bit. Um, so that is how we could, could do that in our scene. Okay. Um, so you'll use that in some, some cases. We're going to use that tool in our, our next bench design as well. But um, thank you for taking the little polygon modeling tour. Um, hopefully you'll be able to use it and make some cool stuff. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good one.